Good morning, good morning. Man, I'm trying to get my other in place. Hold on, let me see here. Dang, don't come on, stop acting up. I'm trying to get my other page together, but it is acting up. But good morning, good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and praise the Lord. Grateful unto the Lord, for this is the day that he has made, and let us be glad and rejoice in it. Just grateful this morning. There we go. To be on with everybody. So this is your morning medicine. Let me give a couple seconds for this other one to click on real quick. My other camera. There we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, Lord, be with it. Oh, there we go. We on, we on. Good morning, good morning, and good morning, and good morning, and good morning. Praise the Lord for the morning medicine. I don't know about y'all, but I'm grateful that the doctor is in the house. Y'all can tell that morning medicine has been Monday and Friday. We're trying to work in times during the week. It was Wednesday prior uh, to our transition, but I'm trying to see uh, my schedule a little bit different now. So I know Monday and Friday I'll be doing morning medicine. I'm trying to work during the week. So just giving you a heads up, as you may have been wondering, man, he didn't have one month on Wednesday. Well, that is the reason why. But I'm grateful that Lord is able me to supply some of this medicine. Mm -mm. Monday and Friday, at least the beginning and the ending. So today's prescription comes from Proverbs chapter 19, verse 9. And as Proverbs chapter 19, verse 9, the Bible says, A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who speaks lies shall perish. He who speaks lies shall perish. A false witness shall not go unpunished. And this morning as I was meditating, my time with the Lord. The one of the thoughts that he came and just came at me with was, why do you have to lie like that? Why do you have to lie like that? And when you think about this, I think it's even hard for liars to admit they lie. And it really makes sense because if you if you are a liar, why would you admit you lie? If you are a liar, why would you admit that you lie? So it only makes sense that somebody who is a liar would struggle with admitting that they lie. And so I was thinking about this th this morning. And the tendency to lie is in the essence of our nature. You don't have to teach a child a lie. That's inherited. Because lying in itself is a mechanism for the flesh to preserve itself. Most of the times why people lie is because they, they are in fear of losing something or they think in order to do that or say that lie, it will help preserve something. It's flesh. Flesh always thinks about self first. But it's amazing here because God speaks of lies from a different place than we quite grab hold of. What place does he speak of? Well, the Lord here in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 9, he says, a false witness shall not go unpunished. Then he says, one who speaks lies shall perish. So God correlates a liar to one who will perish. A false witness shall not go unpunished. Let me break this down for a second. God is speaking here of a false witness. Then he speaks of one who speaks lies. And God is communicating in this wisdom of somebody who starts one way and ends up another. 
a false witness, one who speaks a lie will not go unpunished. In other words, God is communicating here that when we find ourselves in a place lying, that will not go unpunished. He sees it. And God wants us to correct ourselves with our witness. He correlates the language from our mouth in correlation and connection with our witness. That's interesting in that. Because as believers, we're called to do what? Witness the gospel. Witness the truth about Jesus Christ. Witness and be the light, the salt to the earth. So the witness of a believer and what they testify of is of, of importance. Because if I am a witness of Christ, then I testify about Christ and his goodness. So I can't afford for my witness to be tainted. I can't afford for my witness to be compromised. Because if I start allowing my witness to be tainted by what I speak that is outside of truth, then it's a false representation of my witness or who I'm witnessing of. And therefore, God says they would not go unpunished. Why? Because you're out there false, false repping. So let me let me break down a couple of things this morning, because I, I want to ask us that question. Why do we have to lie like that? Why do you have to lie like that? Do you understand what God is communicating when he speaks of the witnessing of what you're testifying? So just when you think about a court case, I mean, is when you think about a court case, one thing that the prosecutor tries to do is compromise the character of the witness. Why do they do that? Because if I can compromise the character of their witness, then what they speak out of their mouth can be questioned if it's even true. So therefore, the testimony of that witness Brings no, has no weight to it. It cannot bring the verdict forward. It cannot help bring the verdict forward. So let me put this thing in spiritual terms. God is using us as witness to bring people unto Christ. But if my witness is compromised or my character is compromised and it in itself can be tainted, then I cannot... Be, my witness or my testimony cannot be used to bring forth or help with the verdict. What's the verdict? For me to be used to help turn the hearts of God or people. The verdict that they can see that what they're in, they're not free. So let me let me ask this. Why, why do we have to lie like that? And it's so hard for us to tell the truth. So what's the definition of a lie? Let's Because people say, man, well, that's not really a lie. Or people say, oh, that's a half lie or that's a white lie. And people say that's not really a lie. So what's the definition of a lie? Let me just break it down in simplistic terms. Anything outside of truth is a lie. Anything. Anything outside of the truth is a lie. Anything outside of the truth. You should have to bend it, twist it, turn it upside down, do half of it. Anything outside of the truth. And I'm not talking about half a truth. I said the truth is the whole truth. That's a lie. So if you feel you have to leave something out, you're lying. Because you're holding back truth. Anything outside of the truth, the whole truth is a lie. A witness does not hold anything back because a witness understands the significance of the verdict. And so when the Lord speaks here and says the false witness, right? He's given us an understanding that where you are in a place, God says, you know what? I want to clean up your character so you can be a witness of truth. 
And we have to be taught truth and how to tell it. Isaiah says that we have to learn. Isaiah chapter one says we have to learn to do good. Remember, good is the character of God and God is a God who will not lie. So if God is a God who will not lie. Then that in itself is a character I must learn. I have to learn to tell the truth. In other words, I got to learn and grow in the character of God so I can be the witness that he's calling forward. And God says, I have to correct you in order for you to be the witness that I'm calling you to be. So when I face a situation that I'm faced with self-preservation or to bring forth the glory of God by spe speaking the truth, I'm going to choose to be the witness of truth rather than the witness of lie, even if it's self-preservation. Even if, if I tell the truth, it might cost me. Because God said, you think the lie won't cost you. But God says here, a false witness will not go unpunished. It, the, the, the deception is we think we get away with the lie, but actually it's greater consequences with being a false witness. And the enemy deceives us by us thinking since we, we are somehow saved by a lie. A lie can never save us. And so God is trying to change our character that why we have to lie like that. If we're a witness of God, what if we serve the God that will sometimes lie to us? We will question the God in whom we serve. And God is saying, I'm a God who will not lie. And if you are my ambassadors and you represent my image, then let that same witness be upon you. And the hard part about it is that we, when finding ourselves in situations and circumstances, the temptation is for us to be a false witness. And the deception is, man, you know what? If we just say that real quick, if we just say that real quick, I got you, brother. I said, if we just say that real quick, then you know what? We'll be all right. If I, if I just say, man, you know what? I just lied, man, God will understand. No, God does not understand that. Because when I choose to be a false witness, I'm saying and communicating to God that I have much faith in him that even though this situation has happened, that he can set me free from the truth in the truth. I don't have to lie. Because if I believe that God is over all and God is in control, then me choosing to tell the truth, God can still preserve me. He can still save me. He can still set me free. He can still cover me. He can still protect me. He can still bless me. Because the blessing is in the character of God and I allow that character to be displayed in me. So the scripture I said earlier was in the book of Isaiah. I think it's Isaiah chapter one. Let me get that exactly. And I said, we have to learn. The Bible says we have to learn to do good. We have to learn it. And the character of us is not the character to do good. This is Isaiah. Let me see here. Isaiah chapter one. I think it's verse. Let me see here. Where we at? Where we at? Oh, Isaiah chapter one, verse 17. Learn to do good. He says, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Verse 17 says, Learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. God says, learn to do good. Learn it. And that's what I'm saying. We have the tendency to lie. And we have to learn to do good. We have to learn to tell the truth. It doesn't come to us easy. The temptation is for us to stay in and preserve the flesh with the lie. 
Let something be put before our face and we have the potential of losing it if we tell the truth. Watch how our flesh says, man, just tell that lie. And that is the testimony or the, the test of where we are with our witness. That's the testimony. That's the test of where we are with our witness. Because remember, in the book of Job, the enemy says if you put something before them, they will compromise. I'm paraphrasing. He said to Job, he, I mean, the enemy spoke to God about Job and said, if you put something before them, they will compromise. That's the same thing the enemy does with us. If you put preservation before them, they will compromise you. Because they're really false witnesses. That's the, that is the accusation that the enemy comes about us. And I'm saying that we have to come to this place to understand that we don't have to lie like that. There's more reverence in the truth than it is in the preservation of a lie. Jesus told the rich man in the gospels, he said, when he said, man, he spoke about being good and he said, only God is good. See, this is the character of God. Only God is good. And God said, that's the character I want you to display and I want you to learn of my goodness. And in God's goodness is that he'll never lie to us. And the Bible says a false witness shall not go unpunished. And then he says, a lie. In the second part of this proverb, he says, but a lie though, a lie shall what? A lie, <clears throat> verse nine, speaks lies shall perish. One, he says, not go unpunished. The second, he says, will perish. What is, he, what is that communication as I wrap this thing up for our morning medicine? A false witness. God is cleaning up the witness. But he says, I don't want you to get in this place where you become a liar. Where you start conforming to this language. And God says, if you conform to that language, you shall perish. False witness being unpunished, meaning that God says you're going to be corrected because I want to clean some thing up. But if you continue to speak in that manner, you shall perish. Why does he say that? Because we learn in John chapter six, we learn in John chapter six that the Lord says he told the Pharisees when the Pharisees, the religious leaders were coming to him, he said what? What did he tell them? He said, your father is the devil. And then the second part, what he tells them, he says, you, he speaks his native tongue. He says, the enemy speaks lies. That's his native tongue. The language of the devil is always a lie. So if that is his native tongue, then God is saying here in Proverbs chapter nine, with wisdom is communicating to us and says, if you speak lies, you shall perish. Because why? You're choosing the nature of the devil. And if he shall perish, then you shall perish with him because you're choosing to remain in the nature of the enemy. So God is saying here, you're choosing your father's desires. You're choosing your father's desires and speaking in a tongue that is not in the proper witness. Because if I speak in lies, guess what I'm doing? I'm witnessing of the devil. If we believe that the power is in the tongue, 
then I have to choose who I witness of. Because you're releasing and empowering something. And I want us to understand that. Because when we lie like that, we're empowering that which is not of God. And if the native tongue of lies is of the devil, then I'm speaking his language. How could we ever think blessing going to come out of that? The enemy never wants to bless us, but always to destroy us. For John 10, 10 says the thief comes no nothing but to steal, kill and do what? Destroy. So I just want to encourage you with our morning medicine this morning. Just a little, just a little snippet. Now why you got to lie like that? Why you have to lie like that? Why we just can't admit the truth? You at your job, man, you relate. Why you got to lie? You don't have to lie. Why don't you just tell the truth? And maybe in essence of even this, we sometimes believe the lie that we don't have, we don't have the issues. If you have a continual pattern of being late, then maybe you need to quit lying to yourself that you're good with time management. See, the lie, when I start to speak lies, speak lies is a connection of the heart. So if I start to speak lies, God is communicating that he says out of the mouth, the heart speaks. So if the heart is, if I speak lies, then the heart is not right. <laughs> My brother say lies is a demonic tongue, man. So you, you, you about to open something up with that. You about to open some up with that. But just peep that. Where's your heart at with that? Because a lie goes deeper than what comes out of your mouth. It's actually what's resonating in your heart. And if I'm able to lie, hear this. If I'm able to lie, don't think you yourself is not lied to. The very fact that we're speaking a lie means we've already been lied to to actually think that this thing will actually bring us a blessing. Because the reason why I'm speaking it because I think in itself that it will bring me good. So I've already believed the lie and the lie that I believe, I'm speaking it. For it is a tongue is not of God because it's not the proper witness. I'm just saying we don't have to lie like that. Why you have to lie like that? So as we go on with our morning medicine, just think about that. Everybody will be approached and tested of will you lie or not lie? What witness will you bring forward? And there in itself can show us where our heart is at. This is your morning medicine. What tongue are you speaking? What witness are you bringing forward? Because if you don't bring forth his witness, it won't bring forth the right verdict. And I'm just saying, I'm just saying. You don't have to lie like that. Let's keep it real. It's just let's speak truth. God bless you. How this is your morning medicine.